This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos, and today we're going to take a look at the slope formula. In this video, we're going to take a look at the following sections. Section 1 is going to talk about what is the slope formula. In Section 2, we're going to take a look at Example 1, and in Section 3, Example 2. Let's get started. All right, in Section 1, we're going to talk about what is the slope formula. Uh, well, first of all, I should put it out here, is that the slope formula is written with the variable m. Uh, some people think it comes from the French word for mountain. Um, when we talk about the slopes of mountains, who knows? So uh, let's write it down and I'll explain exactly what this uh, formula means. Uh, you know, a lot of times when people graph lines, they talk about the slope uh, and they, uh, the slope of the line, and they refer to the line having a rise and a run which is really a good way of looking at it is that when you graph slope with a line you do rise up and run over right so anytime you have a point uh, let's think of it like this and you're trying to get to another point on your line what happens is you rise up some distance which is usually the numerator of the slope and then you run over some other distance which is the denominator of the slope. And in doing so, you then have a slope or a diagonal length like this. So let's explain what this means. Like, for instance, uh, this point over here is going to have an x and a y value. This point over here is going to have a x and a y value. Now to keep the two points separate, uh, we're going to use subscripts. So We'll say that this is our first point, so we'll use little subscripts of 1, and we're going to say that this is our second point, so we use little subscripts there. Now, th those are not exponents. Those are subscripts. They have no mathematical effect on the numbers or letters on themselves except to keep them different. So we're distinguishing between the two points. Point 2, this is point 1. All right, so this distance right here on our uh, triangle here is really just a, a really unique distance. Uh, this point has the same y value of, as this point because they're all the same height up from the x-axis. So if, if this point has a y value of y2, so does this point. Uh, this point has a y value of y1, so this distance is really just the distance between this y value, y2, and this one, y1. So it's just that distance is really equal to y2 minus y1. Right? I'm just taking the difference of these heights represents the uh, length of the segment. So when I subtract y2 minus y1, I'm just finding this length here, which is the rise. Okay, so this length right here is uh, the, uh, there are the x values. So this point has the same x value as this point, so it's x1. And this point has the same x value, well, I know what the x value is, it's x2. It has the x value of that point. So what's this length? Well, this length is x2 minus x1. Okay, so I put x2 minus x1. And this one right here, if I could write it sideways, and that's so easy to do with the tablet, Okay, well, there you go. So I got y2 minus y1, and there you go. So I have the quantification of slope, which is written as the difference of the y values for the rise and the difference for the x values for the run. Okay, now that's a mouthful, and it looks way more confusing than it is used practically. Okay, so let's actually find in the next two sections how to use the slope using some examples. All right, in this section we're going to take a look at an example. So let's say we have a couple points. So I've got negative 3, 6, uh, and let's say we've got another point which is 5, negative 4. All right, so I'm going to call this point A, this one B, 
But uh, more importantly, we've got to decide which one of these points is point one and point two. Now, it, it's arbitrary. So I'm going to call this one our point one and this one our point two. Okay, so now we know which x values are point one, oops, over there, and this one's point two. Anyway, let's use the slope. How does the slope work? All right, well, if I've got rise, well, those are the y values on top. And we put the run, the x values, on the bottom. Okay, so according to this formula, it says we've got to take the y values. So I'm going to take uh, the y values, let's see, are negative 4 and 6. Negative 4 and 6. Okay, then it says take the x values. Okay, so I'm going to take 5 and negative 3. So I'm being careful to use the x2 first and then the x1 second. And same thing for the y values. I put the y2 first and the y1 second. Now the formula says not only do I write down those values, but then I have to also subtract the values. And in, when we use this formula, one thing we have to look out for are the double negatives. That happens, uh, it's pretty common. So the double negatives, of course, make plus, right? Because the opposite of a negative is a positive. So keeping that little technicality in mind, now we subtract. So we take negative 4 minus 6, that's negative 10, and 5 plus 3 is 8. Now you can see that if you don't have a command of positive and negative values, it's going to make this problem a little bit harder for you to do. All right, well, we could leave our answer like this. It's perfectly fine, except most people reduce fractions when they see them. Like here, I could divide these numbers by 2. So divide that by 2, divide this by 2, and I've got a negative slope. Okay, so I know that this line or these two points, if I were to connect them to make a segment, it would have a negative slope. So in other words, the points are going down to the right if I were to connect them. Okay, so here's point A, here's point B, and it's got a downward slope from A to B. Okay, so there's our first example. Let's go on to another example. All right, here's our second example. So let's try a couple other points just to get you familiar with how the slope works. Uh, so I have these two numbers. Now of course you could do problems with with decimal numbers and it works the same way and you could do problems with fractions. Uh, I'm just running through a couple examples. Uh, you know a lot of times uh, people do run into those and, and if you need to use a calculator as an aid to add or subtract values, use one. Alright, so let's say I've got these two points and I want to find the slope between these two values. Well, the slope formula still is the same. y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. The y value is in top, the x value is in the bottom, and there are differences. All right, so again, we're going to decide which one's point 0.1 and point 0.2. Last time I said this is point 0.1, I'm going to be different. I'm going to say this is now point 0.2. Okay, so my x2, y2. Here's my x1, y1. So it is arbitrary which one you call point 0.1 and point 0.2. All right, well, again, it says I've got to subtract the y values. So I'm going to put my y2 minus my y1. Well, I'm not going to show the subtractions yet. I'm just writing down the values. And let's do the same thing with the x's. I got x2 minus x1. So I got 8 and negative 1. And I've got to subtract these values. So subtract. And again, I've got double negative situation. The double negative is a positive. Now let's play cleanup. So 7 minus 2 is 5. 8 plus 1 is 9. Now it looks like I've got two numbers, and it looks like they're relatively, relatively prime. In other words, they have no factor in common, so there's nothing I can do to reduce them. All right, if we were to graph these two points, well, I can kind of just look by looking at here. B would be here in the bottom left. A would be up here. If I were to connect those two points, I get a segment. And you could see that the slope is going up to the right, which is indicated by the slope being positive. If the slope is positive, it goes up to the right. All right, so we've ran through a couple examples, showed you what the slope formula is. So make sure you go back to mathguide.com to see our other interactive quizzes, instructional videos, and text-based lessons. Take care.